welfare after technical difficulties, we're here. But the but blood, blood still works. works. Oh, yes, it does. Yeah. 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 Altos always mess that part up. Okay, that's right. <laughs> the lyrics are actually, I know that the blood still works. Very good. Well, you know, I'm not the writer, okay? I am, though, however. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Well, we're going to good evening, everybody. How are you? Thank you guys for tuning in. I am Brandon Holmes, better known as Stout Media. Stout Thank you guys for tuning in with me. We are a little bit late because of my special guests, but we are on and we are going to get this train rolling. But you guys, as you guys know, we're going through this pandemic and everything, but we have to stay positive. So what's keeping me positive is um, basically coming on live, chatting with some of my faithful clients and just discussing fashion and experience with myself. And we're going to talk about much more. Um, you guys know me. Um, I've been styling in August of the year. Um, I have styled the hat, reality stars, your, you name it. You got breath in your body, and you give me a check. I will work for you. But, um, so you guys know me. You know, you can find me, all hashtag, um, all social media at um, stylingbranded.com. My website is www.stylingbranded.com. So that's enough about me. So, Malcolm, you, we, we all know you for very some that don't. So you might to yourself and tell them the saints and the people who you are. Yes, uh, my name is Malcolm Lee. Wait a minute. First, I got a question. How do I share this to my page, or did I already do it? So it should say share somewhere. It says share on the bottom, but it says I, I go to my page. Okay. Well, you know, I got a team over here. Where's your team? Your choir. Your choir. I, I am the team, and we're on coronavirus. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, on, so you what know. you're gonna do? You can um let me see. Uh, I see share write a post. Is that it? Yes. Hey, so you, can just, you can just say, come on in and press, or you don't have to write a post. You can just share it. Okay, do you see everybody saying it's a bad echo? Um, not on mine. Okay. All right. So, let's see. Right, post. Okay, post. Shit. Okay, there we go. I just did it. This old people oh. in technology. Ready to uh, get some people around you. Okay. <clears throat> Hello, everybody. My name is Malcolm Williams. And uh, I bring you greetings. No, ain't that dramatic. Actually, uh, my name is Malcolm. Uh, I am from the great uh, city of Chicago, Illinois. I was actually originally born in Louisville, Kentucky. And, um, oh, that's like my little button. This is a nice little shirt, my little neck. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm back. I got it up real quick. I was born in Louisville, Kentucky, but I moved uh, to Waukegan, actually a suburb of Chicago, after graduating from Northern Illinois University. I then uh, went ahead and I moved to Chicago. I couldn't go back to Waukegan. It was a little city. I'm a big city boy. So I came to Chicago. Uh, and actually, I got two jobs the same week. I got hired at Salem Baptist Church of Chicago, where I've now been serving for 25 years. And I also got hired at a social service agency that I actually worked at for 10 years. So uh, real cool. Yeah, that's it. What else you want to know? That's Malcolm Williams, guys. Um, so just, just some fun facts you guys were just doing on at the beginning. I played his song, The Blood Still Works. Um, you guys give him some heart. I know your choirs are singing that. Honey, some of y'all praise teams are singing it. The blood still works. You know, even in this trying time, that the blood still works. He is the writer of that song. And he's like the, the amazing, great faith they recorded some years ago. Yeah. Another fun fact about Malcolm. You guys know Malcolm is one director, but he's in two states. He's here in Chicago and in L.A. And another fun fact. You really Ready? Man, Let me uh, help you. Hold on, hold on. You're giving them fun facts so quick. Chicago is a city, and so is L.A. <laughs> you talk about two states. Oh. Now, you're not going to come on my show and get me together. I'm going to be like, what do you, you do to be okay? <laughs> <laughs> but no, so in this this young man, um, that's uh, he's not young, but we say this young man 
He started singing and directing at six years old. Six. Six. He yeah. was standing in the front of the mirror. To my I was talking about that. So that's a little about him. So we're just, we'll get right into it. Um, oh, okay. Thank you. Um, I was just reading the comments. Thank you. Um, so, Malcolm, we'll jump right into it. Um, in the ministries that you have been a part or led, was fashion important? Definitely, uh, because before they see you, they before they hear you, they see you. Um, so, I think sometimes uh, fashion can make a big impact just based on how they, because they're going to look at you when you walk into the building, uh, especially whether it's your crew, whether you're by yourself. They're going to look at you, try to see. They're going to size you up. That's what we do. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, yes. So, that is. So, I'm going to read the two things to come over because we got a couple of people saying that we're getting disconnected. Um, a lot. I don't know. Maybe, maybe y'all got Android. So, Ooh. look over here and holding this. These apples are working very good. So, if you get off the Android and get on a computer or something, I think you'll be all right. Oh, <laughs> but okay, so that's good. So, um, Malcolm, yes, okay, so yes, fashion was important in the ministry that you were in. Uh oh, I just lost you. Are you still there? Yes, I hold on one second. Okay, see, you see, now? Okay. see there, you didn't talk about them androids in there. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was actually my team over here, and he just flipped the camera around. But you know, I put him in the camera in a little while. <laughs> oh, yes, very good. You're on iPhone. But, okay, so Malcolm said, Malcolm said that, you know, the ministries that he has led and worked with, including his choir, fashion has been important. So we'll jump right into it. Um, do you feel that a choir needs a salary? Um, so that's weird because I think things are very different. Uh, let's, let's be mindful of I... Great Faith started in 1994. Um, so at that time, choir robes were popular. We did, of course, we come from Chicago. Everybody in Chicago, if you were a choir, you had a robe. And it could have been three of y'all or, you know, two of y'all. They had choir robes. Um, so it was important. And if we go back to history, one of the reasons that uh, choirs and groups, even uh, before there was a big choir movement, many of the groups, the caravans or the smaller groups that you see, they wore robes. That was because they wanted to not let the focus be on their body. And they wanted the focus uh, to be on their musical ability. Now, they came out in good garments. Now, the robes was cute. And uh, they put on the pearl collars and little lace and stuff. But they were, it was a, a, a big part of it was to be uniform. Uh -huh. And I think that's one of the things that we're doing now a bit differently. So uh, 20, 25 years ago, when I say a choir needs a stylist, I think probably not. But now, uh, since we're on such a different trend, I think that it's, po uh, that it's very possible. Okay. Very, very good. Good answer. Uh, so how did you hear about Style Me Brandon? How did you hear about that group? Actually, if I can be correct, I think you had dressed up Bishop Trotter. And I asked Bishop where he got that suit. And he told me, you got the suit. And I reached out to you. I was getting ready for a photo shoot for my recording. Mm -hmm. um, actually, to promote um, the recording. And I, first of all, I didn't like you at first. Let's be <laughs> The feeling was neutral. Because I, I've been dressing myself my whole life. And I was like, who's hey, telling me this is late? Wait, what? What did you say? I thought the suit was nice. And you came in and let me have it. No, we're not going to do this. And throwing my stuff around. And, yeah, that bothered me. I was troubled in my spirit. But uh, <laughs> when I saw, like, the first couple of pictures, and then the photographer that I was working with at that time was Daryl Fowler. And he had, Shout out to Daryl Fowler. Yeah, he had taken some amazing pictures for me. And I think I put on my first thing. And he said, oh, my God, this looks nice. And it was just the fact of, Someone else coming to look at, and if you remember my first photo shoot, uh, I would say about maybe 80% of the stuff we used was stuff that was in my closet, but you put it together differently than I would have ever put it together. I brought in clothes, I, too. 
Okay, I said, yeah, this is nice. Uh huh. I, was, at least I did that right. And it's a few things that you said to me that still trouble my spirit. Uh, he was like, it's too matchy matchy. Everything don't have to match. It don't have to be the same. Blue is blue. And all of that, you was yelling at me, but uh, it expanded the way in which I thought about, um, you know, some of the simpler stuff right, in which I was winning. Okay. <laughs> well, you know, I still got more to move because to get you to make sense at the end. That's okay. a compliment. Just take the compliment. Keep it moving. <laughs> well, let's jump into the next question, Malcolm. Is yes. there a direct role for a gospel artist or a choir director like yourself? <laughs> that is a loaded question. And well, um, let's let's give me some loaded answers. <laughs> the, one, one of the biggest, I guess, challenges even with that is that different people, um, okay, okay, let, let me just say it like this. Um, ten, 10 people, I tell the 10 people, hey, come on, we're going to wear all black today. Everybody going to wear what their vision or what they think they look great in. I think I look cool in this. I think I look great in this. So they um, throw that on. So doesn't make it right or wrong because sometimes we look at people be like, oh, like that. Uh uh. Well, why, why do you wear that? You're talking about the choir. I'm talking about the no, talking about director as well. The director. Okay, very good. So, sometimes, and, and we wear stuff that can sometimes be considered a distraction, but we wear stuff that we like. So, you know. Okay. It, it, Can you give me an example of a distraction? Uh, and and let, let's just go with current trends. Uh, okay. We do not always lead or direct in current trends. Uh, sometimes, you know, we go and we get the tightest suit ever, and then we can't even lift our hands up properly. Or I turn around and they can tell you uh, my credit card number because my pants are so tight. So, um, but, you know, that's fashion. And then when we go back and look at, you know, Edwin Hawkins or, you know, different people from the 70s, they was wearing fitted bell bottoms. And you know it wasn't a big deal, so but we went through a spell where everybody was wearing really big stuff. So I'm not gonna say it's something right or wrong, but I want to say when you put this on, you, you just need to make sure, just get a look at yourself. And ten people, you got ten people. Nine of them gonna love it, and one of them is gonna hate it. That doesn't make the one wrong. It's just a difference of opinion. So you hear that gospel artists and choir directors get you ten people. <laughs> and ask them, do I look presentable before you get up here to go minister in front of your people, okay? That's probably too late at that time because you already at the engagement. You got to wear that. Because <laughs> you're wondering how come you can't pay your band because they just, they got they didn't got your credit card number. They didn't pay their phone bill while you was directed. Yeah. And what <laughs> fun is, um, uh, and, and you have to plan. It's been some times that Great Faith was like, side eye me, like, what you got on? You know, whatever. So we live through it. Glory to God. <laughs> Great Faith asked you, what did you have on? Oh, yes. <laughs> it wasn't even um, Salvi Brand look, was it? Uh, it may have been one or two, but I'm talking previous years. Okay. Okay. Because Great Faith, I get them together. Okay. So they all get to learn what I want to do. Great Faith is in here right now. So Yes, Great Faith. Great Faith, if you in here, come on and give y'all leaders some hearts. Don't give me your hearts. Give your leaders some hearts. Yeah, and yeah. Great Faith, you guys share, share, share. I right, we are finna get into some good talk with y'all with y'all leader, okay? So yeah, share yeah. some people. Yeah. Some people from know, the he don't get on live talk. He don't. It's some people from the Unity Choir too. Hey Salem, Unity Choir, can y'all give me some hearts too? All my friends, give me some hearts. Somebody hey, just Salem. Asked, somebody just asked me, is that a uh, plant real? My plant or Malcolm's plant? Your plant. My plant is very much so real. Okay, thank you, man. <laughs> okay, so okay, so. That was the dress code. Okay. So, how should a gospel artist slash choir director present himself? Is dressing important, and why? And um, again, that depends on the event. There are some okay. events where, and there, and so we're in a trend now where a lot of choirs are. We're in a uniform stage where everybody wants to get uniform. Um, and but there are some events or. 
When you say uniform, do you mean robes or maybe get a skirt and a blouse made? Uniform, I'm talking like matching dresses where everything you have on is matching. Uh, something that Larry and Larry's House of Style have made. Because we got some little uniforms made by them, too. We was real cute in our green, our little beige, whatever. Um, but, and they also made some roles for us. And long before that was Great Scott Fashion. Um, but let, let, let me just go back. What's funny, because, but you will have some engagements where they tell you a requirement of this engagement is that you must be in choir world. Uh, because a lot of times, especially at the corporate events, when they book the choir, they want you to look like a choir. They don't want you showing up in your little uh, blue jean outfit. It, it ain't just for that. So, uh, well, my outfit is together, okay? It is. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. And the choir, they're they going to make you take your hair wrap off to sing in the choir, though. Why? We, and this is, we are in 2020. You can see my hair and see that I'm a man. It is a distraction. Why? Jesus, no hair wrap. Did you see Maddie Moss Clark when she made that lady take the hat off in the middle of that song? He wrote, he wrote thorns. Jesus had thorns around his head. And I feel like Jesus. Don't compare that leper rap to Jesus. <laughs> yeah, but listen, well, you know, it was a lot of things Maddie should have took off too. But oh, he, oh. I am not a part of that conversation. I was anything. <laughs> you know, I am a Clark fan to my heart. <laughs> yeah. Okay, back to what you said. Um, yes. We went, and I could think specifically about an event that a great faith was blessed to do like a couple years in a row, and it was in Madison, Wisconsin, and it was a king program. Um, and we showed up in some uniform. It was beautiful. The, the girls had on all black dresses with multi-strand pearls, and the guys had on black shoes, white shirts, and black ties. And the promoter said, when are you guys going to put on your, your robe? And I said, oh, we're dressed. We didn't bring robes. And she was looking at me and she said, I thought all choirs wear robes. But it was, you know, somebody didn't look like us. We was like, oh, we have several looks. So, you know, I was like, you, I said, well, you just invite us back next year and we'll bring our robes for you, honey. Right. you are here now. Put that in your contract. But there, uh, it's a, even, we've done a Christmas event where they, they want you in your role. And that's, that's the look or the standard look of a choir in the eyesight of many. They want to see you in robes. Do you think that's fair? Do you think that's okay? How do they know that your members can afford robes? How do they know? So how do you think that's fair? That's just the time that we're living in. Well, first of all, if you want that engagement, you will work it out. Um, their rent a robe. Uh, but what if they gave, not to cut you off, but what if they gave you that check already? What they going to say? They want a refund? Yeah, I mean, you have to make it a part of that contract. Though. Okay. And, and you and that kind of stuff you discuss up front. Typically, if we're booking something, we ask like, "What what is this event?" Because we don't want to show up in three piece suits and all of that stuff. And then you know, it's an outdoor event where everybody got on shorts and t shirts. Um, so so there's a conversation to be had. Um, and and you, I, I guess it's okay to say you don't have robes. You know, uh, is there another option? You know, or can you wear this? Is this fine? Mm hmm. Okay, that's good. good. Well, let's. Well, I'm gonna really talk about me now. About, so, me, either it can be me concerning the choir or me just concerning yourself. Do you feel that the words of is necessary? Uh, I, I think so. At this point, um, I mean, I just think it's a great idea. For me, um, it takes the pressure and the stress off to have some. I never would have even thought I would want somebody in my closet. But it relieves the pressure and the stress of packing uh, for events. Um, for instance, um, a couple years ago, you you styled me for the Stella Awards, um, and it was so hilarious. No, this is what you're wearing on the plane, and this on the plane. I'm like, oh, we're talking about the show, and you was like, no, what events are you doing? And you thought it was important for uh, different uh, things for each event, and and it made like a big impact and the response that you in turn get from people is good. Now, um, in terms of great faith, um, I have a choir member that is a six. Uh, is she a six? Tiffany used to be a two. Uh-oh. Is she on here? Hey, little Tiff. And then I had like a 32. So uh, my choir members, uh, they never, and so for the longest, I always, I picked the uniforms. I was like, this is what we wear. Here go the robe. This is what we wear. 
uh, this the dress, this is what you're getting. Um, but uh, when you have a size 2 and a size 32, it's often hard to find something that accommodates both of them. And um, my size 2 actually told me I'm sick of wearing all these big old dresses because you buy something for the big girls. I want to get something that I look cute in. So that was, I think that's where a stylist would come in um, to say, you know, hey, this will work. Here's something. And actually, you did that. Um, here's some things that will work. You know, what are y'all guys wearing? Actually, I still, I have some pictures that we're um, actually about to release, I believe, next month uh, that you actually help, you know, put the stuff together, put the look together for uh, what everybody will wear. But um, that, that's just a challenge. Uh, when, you, when you have all different sizes, what can I get my people to make everybody look good? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I am necessary, guys. Style is out there. You are it. Got started. So whoever you are, you know, you can find something. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, so we're, we're right there with um, necessary. What have you learned from it? Can you hear me? You said, can I hear you? Yeah. Yeah. I asked a question. What was your question? You said for the two style people, for people that need me, I said, do you travel? Yes, I travel wherever you need me to go. And I'm traveling in this pandemic, OK? I got masks, I got gloves, I got everything I need, OK? OK. Everything I need. Now you really look like Wendy Williams. Okay. Yes, um, Dennis, we're going to get into that. I'm, I'm, I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to open up with the question. Right now, we're doing my questions, and I'm going to get to you guys' questions. So that's a good, that's a, that's a good, good question. Um, okay, so what have you learned from me? Uh, not to be matchy matchy. Um, and uh, I mean, just really throwing stuff together, and it works. Um, that That's, yeah, because... Yeah, I never would have worn no. You had me wearing some. First of all, Chelsea boots. I hate the name of them, but you had me put some Chelsea boots on with some sweatpants, and I was like, "Yikes!" But when I put it on, everybody's like, "Oh, you flossing!" I remember, remember the little track suit I put on. You was like, "No, we're gonna wear some white gym shoes," and then I put on my white gym shoes. You said, "No, we're gonna order some new ones." <laughs> the one that you go to the airport and you go to airport now. Yeah, they live for me. They was asking, asking, shut up, Keisha. Um, yeah, they was they was like, Yeah, I had my little chain on, I felt sexy. He was like, No, you're gonna wear sunglasses. So that's another question. Should gospel artists be sexy? I'm just joking. I'm very joking. much so. Shirley Caesar is 90 years old, and she's very sexy. And on number one on the chart. I didn't say that Shirley was Shirley, I didn't say you was 90. That was not me. <laughs> I was glad <branded>. that <laughs> But yes, that, yes, gospel parties can be very much so sexy. Um, which we talked about last week was always a moment. You know, you remember um, when Erica Campbell from Mary Mary, Jay Bowen dressed her in that white fitted dress, and the Saints had a tax cut. It said it was too fitted. First of all, her mom was snatched in that dress. She really was. She was snatched. And I, Jay Bowen got ten dollars the for that look. And they 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 was number one for that picture and everything. So sometimes you have to make it make you make it yeah. And it's okay, like I said last week, it's okay to be saved in fashion. It is totally okay. Yeah, yeah. It's okay. It's very much so okay. So let's talk about the pros and the cons of having a uh budget. Uh some people just can't afford it. They be struggling. And you said say it again? I said budget. Some people just budget. can't. Okay. But budget. So I, I can touch base on that, guys. So when I do my consultation, when I send out my question here, that is that is that's a question. What is your budget? I can I can do I can make miracles work, but you're gonna pay my fee. So the queen your budget in. doesn't include my fee. Your budget includes no, no. your look is going to be. Uh-oh. We got Alderman Stephanie Coleman is in here. And we yes! That was my guest last week. Ricky Diller, hi. Hey, Alderman Stephanie Coleman, I love you. 
Okay, I'm sorry for interrupting. No, you're okay. Greet the people. I love it. Hey, yeah. choir master, how are you? Okay. So yeah. So what? So, so you said budget. So I can, I can please don't hit me up with a hundred dollar budget. But if that's so budget, I would. I promise you, I would try my best to make it work. But budget does come for a lot of people that I see out in the streets at crime stores. Um, maybe just everyday shopping, whatever, and they be like, oh my God, when I get my money right, I'm gonna hit you up. Well, you pay you pay that half cell phone bill, you pay that high car note, they tell you that in your head cause more than tuition, you pay for your child. So how come, you know, you can't figure it out to find a salad to do very much so in one? And not so make a salad, but you need an image consultant. And once again, you guys, that budget includes your look. It doesn't include my fit. But talk with me. Be honest with me. I take green. Maybe you can't afford to pay me, but you can afford your budget. You say, I was in two weeks in late. I would say, girl, let, let me get the sound of you. What's your size? Let's do what we got to do. But it's communication. Communication is the key. You have to communicate. You have to be 100 with me. And especially that we are in now. Like, I have a lot of guys who are here that, are, that are still trying to care for the sellers. And right now, they're not doing anything. So the looks I pull for them for when they're going to be orange, you can't wear that in August. So we have to figure something out. But it's, it's communicating. Communication is the key. Tell me, this is what I have. This is maybe what I can do. Maybe next round go. Just talk to me. Now, I ain't doing no favor next round go. But you know, you know, we start, you know, let's make it make sense. Talk to me. I'm your brother. And you know, let's let's figure out what's going on. But you ain't gonna play with me though, okay? And you're not gonna do <laughs> So that's it needs some more. Okay, I know that's more than it's more than this, but the pros and cons of the work with Um, let me see, something else. Uh well, I said a pro and that that is putting you in some things that you typically wouldn't wear. Um, somebody else I could give like some amazing compliments to is LaVonda Hubble. And some of the stuff that you have put her in, I'd be like, oh my God, LaVonda, you look amazing. Like, uh, yes, yeah, she's been killing it. But, and it's typically stuff that we wouldn't wear. And then you, and you would say, try this. Now, there's some stuff, let me be honest, that you can tell me to try and you'd be like, uh-uh, take that out. <laughs> And uh, so, so that's a. Those are all pros. But the funny thing about that is, you guys, uh, he probably gonna throw me on the bus for this. But so we'll do a fitting. Malcolm will have me over there. I'll get there at five o'clock. I don't leave until one thirty in the morning. And we have pink clothes for three months. And, and, and the clothes that he'll be like, okay, well, Brandon, I can't wear that. You know, they're gonna make me say this. They're gonna say that. He'll go on and throw it to the side. So, well, I'm, I'm not a great cleaner. I'm pretty much behind myself. So, you know, I just about to house up. And he'll be like, okay, well, leave that out. Maybe bring that out. And then I'll get a picture from him the next morning talking about, well, you know, I think this actually do look good. I think I'm going to try. Like he was saying earlier, a lot of stuff like with the Chelsea boots, with wearing the different stuff with the joggers and stuff. He was like, oh, no, no, I can't do this. I can't wear this. And look at him. I know y'all love his pictures that he take his mirror when he's in the airport. That's what he's feeling himself. Okay, if he take a picture when he gets to the airport, oh, he is feeling real, real good. Oh, my gosh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, very good. This is going good. So listen, so this is another question we're talking about. The travel. Um, how is it traveling from uh, from city to city um, been a quiet way to keeping up with fashion? Because, you know, fashion is different in L.A. than it is in Chicago. So how do you keep up with it? I know you bring, oh, my God, y'all, he brings so much stuff back from L.A. I do because I love L.A. Speaking of that, I'm going to have a, a clean out, too. I'm about to have a sale. I'm about to sell a whole bunch of stuff up. But anyway, look, for real, one of the things, though, <clears throat> uh, 
So, okay, this uh, this old, oh, this happened years ago. One day I was saying, oh, I got to go shopping because I'm going out of town and I need a new suit. Vicky Wiley said, child, please. And so I said, what? And Vicky Wiley said, I give me two or three good pieces and I wear them everywhere I go. She said, that way I ain't even got to think about what did I wear last time because I probably had this or this on and I'm going to have it on again. However, times have now changed because we cannot repeat outfits because they'll let you have it. If I wear something to Salem this Sunday and try to turn around and wear it in L.A. next week, they're going to be like, we saw your picture. Or if somebody went live last week, you had that suit on last week. And so, uh, yeah, oh, Adrian, I saw that. You get in trouble for that. Uh, one of our choir administrators just said that the unity choir, the choir I'm over at Salem needs a style. Ooh. I totally agree. Don't do that. Don't do that. Let's talk about my church choir. But y'all can start saving now. Very good. www.salmibrandon.com. <laughs> we can yeah. do a Zoom consultation. Yeah. But on this, with, the, with the whole, the way social media is, and we take Instagram, we live online. After the concerts are over, everybody takes pictures with you. So many of those things you got to put up, and depending on when it is, for instance, um, the the blazer that you styled me in, uh, I hosted. Actually, it was one of the it was a Stella Award show, and I hosted a, a fashion show. I think it was or something. It was a red carpet for something. Anyway, it was a full blazer, but you started with a uh, regular button down and some jeans. Remember that. Yes. But a, a black and white polka dot blazer with red hearts on it. And the picture gets uh, 2,000 likes, and you get all those comments on it. I can't wear that again. Long time, because everybody remembers what you wore. Or you got a style of totally different. Well, I'm going to throw you on the bus. Malcolm will wear something in L.A. or something. I put him, I threw him to go minister somewhere or maybe hold something and he'll be he'll, he'll wear it. Take pictures. And I told him for a day, I mean to Salem on Wednesday and Sunday. And Malcolm up to the screaming with his main outfit on. He does. So I'll text him like, you know, you okay? And he'll say, Oh, you didn't like my picture. No, Malcolm, you just had that outfit on and you saw how many likes you got in that picture. Why do you have this outfit on again the same exact way? And let me tell you. Well, you styled it. You know what I have? A good cleaner. If I wear the same outfit every week, as long as it's clean and ain't funky, I can wear it. Now. And he has a good tailor, too. He's been with Enrique for, for, since he's been born. Yeah. Great. Thing. And that makes the choir. Um, Artists, you guys need a tailor. Invest in you a good tailor. Find you a tailor and stick with them. Let them let them find you. Let them get to know you. So they can tailor your things. Like Malcolm said, it's you know sometimes it can be a little too tight, but sometimes it can be a little too loose. Too loose. And, and that wears me out. Okay? And I have two tailors. Let's say that. Let's not forget about Mario in LA because he is yes. one of the greatest. And um, the way he makes a suit looks like it was made for you. Uh, Donald Buster Wood said it's feedback. It's probably Are you on an Android or iPhone? Has all of their phones on. G3, turn your phones off. <laughs> Buster Woods has feedback. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm back. <laughs> okay, so, 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 um, feedback on that. How um, basically, how do you uh, so how do you keep up with it? Uh, well, I I shop a lot. That's basically the issue. But my problem is I keep stuff forever. I need to get rid of stuff, which is why I'm about to have an online garage sale. I got so much stuff. I mean, it's ridiculous. Um, so and and a lot of kids. So it used to be a time where I was able to give a lot of suits and stuff away. But we're not wearing suits anymore. But so now I'm finding myself, I got a whole stack of jeans I got to get rid of, a whole stack of button down shirts or whatever. And, you know, just just got to uh, begin to purge and get rid of stuff. Mm -hmm. 
But no, they're not going out of style. Okay. They're not going out of style. However, there's a generation of people behind us. They don't wear suits anymore. They, they, they got one suit, and that was their graduation suit. And they don't wear that suit again until somebody died in their family. And then they don't suit no more, but they're going to squeeze in that suit. <laughs> with, some, with some gators on. Yeah. Oh, that oh. Gator. Uh oh, Mark, Mark Hubbard, you supposed to get on. Mark Hubbard, you supposed to get on Facebook. Facebook. Or did you just answer the phone on my live, Malcolm? Because we were talking about where I started at, and I wanted Mark Hubbard on the line. Okay, well tell Mark Hubbard we'll be on for about a good ten more minutes. He go back and view it. Okay. No, we want him on while we're here. Well, you know, I took my, I took Mark Hubbard out of the box too. Good job. Very good job. And he wears that suit faithfully. Don't do that. Don't do my time <laughs> directly like that. Right. That's another Malcolm Williams fun fact. <laughs> with Mark Hubbard. Yes. You started with Mark, Mark Hubbard. Yes. In 91. In 91. Wow. That shows how old you are. Yeah. I was in, actually, I was in college. And at that time, I was part of Mark Hubbard, this, this, uh, this history. Mark Hubbard did a workshop at Illinois State University. I was a part of the choir at that time, and I came down, and uh, he had some singers, and they sung, boy. That was Darlene Wills, uh, Vicky Wills, State, Reggie Saggers. All of them was with Mark Hubbard. They came down. They sung. The first album had just came out, and I said, oh, my God, I want to join the choir. And so three of us, me, uh, got one of my best friends, Quentin Bradshaw and uh, Martin Wood, we all joined Mark Hubbard. We were driving from DeKalb to Chicago for rehearsal. Ain't that crazy? There. I saw with Mark Hubbard for years. Mark Hubbard introduced me to Chicago, uh, gave me several opportunities to direct. Uh, I think it worked. That was the song uh, that kind of put me on the map a little bit and allowed me to do what I did. Thank you, Mark Hubbard. Love you, Pops. Yes, yes. Okay, Mark, I'm going to say this time, man. Very good. Uh-oh. Turn around. Okay, so next question. What is your favorite great faith uniform, or do you have, if not great faith, a ministry that you have left? That's crazy. Great faith has had so many uniforms. Um, and a lot of times we look at stuff and we don't, um, you know, great faith, and, and I, I can say, like, not pat myself on the back or to my own horn, but Great Faith has always been trendsetter. I remember when we got the long khaki skirts, and everybody was like, what is that? You know, and then everybody was wearing khaki skirts. I mean, we y'all got- were. Y'all were very much so, and y'all was very, very, y'all was, y'all, y'all was trendsetter. Yeah, we got the African skirts, and then we saw everybody African skirts, whatever. Uh, one uniform, ooh, they let us have. Now, we came out. Well, now, we had a stylist when we did the uh, Walking in My Destiny recording. That's when the girls had the blue jean denim stretch dresses uh, with the sleeves. And the guys didn't wear suits. The guys, uh, the stylist for that um, had the guys wear some jeans, white button-down, black school vest with an orange and black checker tie. The people went absolutely bananas when we came out. Like, you know, it was because it was a totally different look for us. Uh I remember when we got, even we got some pink and black, the, the guys had the pink blazers with black pants and black shirts. They let us have it. But because real men didn't wear pink then or whatever. The girls had black dresses with a little orgasm, a little swing. We, we was all right. Anyway. Is that the video when y'all all went crazy, when y'all was shouting and yeah. everybody had went like y'all was at the Black Jesus Church? Yes, that was a uh, whole, yeah. That was that video. I remember that one. We were very Baptist then. The Lord gave us the dance. Now, that was get free. Actually, do you know that was 1998? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that was a long time ago. So you guys see it. Malcolm Williams in Great Faith has been around a long time. He, this is a legend that's on here. Not quite a legend now. Don't get crazy. <laughs> well, he told y'all how old he was. I, I'm proud of it. People are dying every day. You know what yes, I mean? They are. I'm at AR League at Gatlin. I, I celebrate every day alive. The blood still works? Ah! Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. <laughs>
Uh, let me. Ooh, that's a hard question. You have to say Kurt Franklin because he is always cutting edge. Every time he gets out of something, it's killer. I mean, he he looks great. Um, I'm trying to think in terms of like just regular though. I think Todd Delaney does a great job too. Like when I see him, and a lot of times he can be casual, but he can also dress completely up and. But like he, he usually always really great. So a nugget, um, you guys, Todd Delaney does have a style. A shout out to my to my bro Jeremy Ferguson. He, he was Todd Delaney. And so that's why let me write that name down. Let me write that name down. Very good. <laughs> There's enough money out here for all of us to be all right, okay? <laughs> there is a I do not man promoting and supporting my my bro. Okay. Now I got That's some right. of my bros that can go to hell because I see their inboxes that they send to my clients. But I don't I don't deal with that too with them. So that I don't mind getting a shout out on my life. Okay, let's talk about that. Hey I got a qu why don't you ask a question and I want to give away a Blood Still Works t shirt uh to one of your people that's viewing right now. Okay, so how they going to get through social distance? You going to mail it to them? Yeah, everything is mailed. Yeah, very good. Yes, Yasmin <laughs> Dr. is very professional, okay? <laughs> my option is always available. We have God kept. And actually, I even give my option to get the blood still works or God kept me. So I supposed to head on the blood still works or God kept me shirt, but he told me he was so submitted. <laughs> So you want me to ask um, a question pertaining to you? Um, what do you want me? To, what do you want the question to be? To me, and then the first person that answers. All right. Well, no, we can we can figure out how many people have been on here. Um, you guys, um, how old was Malcolm when he started singing and directing? You should and I say think that we talked about that at the beginning of the show, so we can see how many people have been on here. With us. Okay, then you tell the people they they can ask questions. Yes, I have questions. Oh, okay. Yeah, I I, I got the questions. Oh, there goes somebody. Is that one of your choir direct? I mean, that one is. Are those your choir members? They know that. Nope, that was that's uh Chanel and Zarina Duffy. And actually, they do know because they're from my home church in First Corinthian Missionary Baptist Church in North Chicago, Illinois. And they it's so funny because they got everything the blood still works. Oh, I'm going to send you a God kept me. She probably got God kept me too, but I'm going to send it to you. Okay, so that's the winner. Yay. And Dennis Berry, I'm going to send you some too just, in, just because you were second to answer. So you guys can inbox Malcolm and he'll get that over to you guys, okay? Um, okay, so you said Todd Delaney and Kurt Franklin. Yeah. Is, lead, is your gospel peers that's leading the way right now? Yes. Okay, you got a woman for me? Oh, yikes. I'm trying to think who comes out and be with a woman that's a female. I, I would, if I go like toward the classic side, I would say Yolanda Adams. She okay. uses goes wrong. I mean, whatever, whether it's a pantsuit, a dress, I mean, and see, and that's really not fair because she's so tall and slender and cute, so it kind of makes it easy for her to wear whatever she put on. But but she does a great job. I'm trying to think of somebody. Are you trying to tell the women that you like them tall, slender? No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that makes her look nice. That makes her look nice. I, now, don't be, don't be discriminating I, I like them short and fat now. Yeah. Okay, With a good girdle. With a Don't good girdle. A good girdle, body mass, some, some Tamla man undergarment. Yeah. Tamla man. Yeah. You know what? That's another person, too. Tamla man usually does not. Tamla man comes out flawless. And what, whatever, I mean, she, her undergarments are amazing. And I, I mean, she never moves. I mean, she, she's a good one too. I'm, yeah. Okay, that's good. That's good. Uh, okay, so let's get out of the gospel. Out of the gospel. Celebrity, reality star, R&B singer, rapper, politician, um, 
out, not gospel, that's leading the way in fashion right now. Uh, Will Smith never goes wrong for me. It's, it's so many because them suits that uh, Idris be wearing are always amazing. Amazing, uh, yeah. Uh, Jay Z, oh, them suits oh, that Jay -Z be wearing. I'd be like, yes, you know, just nice looks. June yeah. Everose styles Jay Z. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. I can't afford another. Yes, you can. The bus still works. Ah! <laughs> okay, so we're going to open it up. So we're going to ask the question from the audience. Uh, Ooh, somebody said I was... For me, it's supposed to be questions for Malcolm, um, but I'll answer questions. So I believe in it. He asked me, um, what did I use to determine Malcolm's style and body? So... Basically, when, um, when I do my consultation with my clients, um, I, I basically research them. So I, I go to their social media, they have websites. I look through their websites. They have albums. I look through their albums. Now, basically, basically try to figure out what is their image. And I go with the pros and cons. I tell them this is not what we're going to do, where we're heading. So, I, so my job is to so, say that if we're doing a shoot and January and you're not releasing it until um, the maybe August or you know September. It's my job to know what is going to be training around that time. I don't want to put you in you know winter clothes and when you release this album, you know, it's like it doesn't make sense. So why I got you in a turtleneck and you release an album in the summertime? And so as far as Malcolm, his style and his body type. So Malcolm, as you guys know, he has been in the gym like crazy. Shout out to Malcolm in the gym. Y'all should get in the gym too. Tell me what I look good, don't I? Tell me what I look good, don't I? Tell me what I look good, don't I? Yes, very good. So um, basically, I basically look into, um, I love you too, Um uh, Basically, I, basically, I just, I wanted to take Malcolm out of what he was in. You know, Malcolm was the way he he'll wear all this matchy, matchy stuff. Um, you know, it's just, I wanted to make it make sense in the, in the, the time that we are in, when it came to Malcolm. So my first time working with Malcolm, if you guys remember, it was the photo shoot. I put him in that all black. Um, he had on, it was leather from head to toe. Y'all know the choir master for wearing leather head to toe. But Malcolm was very, very fashionable with his all black. He had on a slim, he had on a slim pin. Um, he had on a button up with the leather jacket with the boot. When he put it on, he was like, Brandon, I could have never done nothing like this. And I got all leather on. And it was like, well, why not? Like, it's not it's not what you do, it's how you do it. Right. But most people were wearing leather, they were wearing like bell bottom pants. Like it wasn't making sense. So down the town we can wear and make sure that so it goes back to having a amazing tailor. Stop buying your size. Like a lot of a lot of guys and women. Like women like, oh my God, I know I'm an 18, but I want to grab a 20 or a 22. It's not making it make sense, girl. Get you a girdle to try to fit into the city. Okay? And the guy, you are a true 36, 38, and you bad a 40. Because I'm going to touch base on it, you know, it's Brandon show. Oh, my God, I don't want to look gay. What does gay look like? So, you know, it's okay to wear tailored clothes. It's okay to wear clothes fitted to your body. You wonder why you're single. You're single, honey, because you got too much food. Well, I'll bring yourself in. So someone can come in with you, okay? Um, and, I oh. that, 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 so I hope that answers your question, then, because I was going to go through. I grew up with that, honey. So I was going to go. I was going to go a whole other way. But Keisha wanted to know what is matchy match. Malcolm Wood is matchy match. That is the great definition of matchy match. Matchy no, match. You, you have so you have on. You know, Malcolm will put on all polka dots. He's done it before. He has a polka dot suit with a polka dot shirt, a polka dot tie, polka dot sock. And if they had the polka dot shirt, he would have had them all too. You better be very glad that I'm trying to be saved and sanctified. 
right now. Because I did not. Hey, LeBron Hubbard, I just talked about how amazing you look. Uh, it was a polka dot shirt and a polka dot blazer. I had a black pants and black shoes. Thank you very much. See, Keisha agrees. She said he's done. He no. that. He will put on a match. Cold match. Oh, you know, and he real. He gets serious with his lapel. He found a match. He found a match. And he's like, Malcolm, come on. Can we come on? Can we put this right for this? And we add an off color. Like, come on, let's do it. Make it. Make it. Okay. First of all, can I say two things? I was born in the 70s. And he. <laughs> Had Goranimals. Now you probably oh. you know what Goranimals are. Um, you can tell the people for those that don't know. Uh, Goranimals. What we used to do there. There were sections in the store. Okay. Of the there would be a different animal, like a uh everything that had a cat on it. You could wear the different cat. So this shirt would go with these different pants. Or if it was a dog, then the Goranimal. This went with these this pants. People from different shirts, so they can tell you what goes together. So we matched when I was growing up. We didn't throw anything like y'all see us do today. But God. But God. He had brought you up out of that thing. Now, the, now the question y'all want to know how many closets you got. How many closets you have, man? Well, it, it's horrible right now. I'm, I'm doing some work. I have a custom closet. Upstairs, I have two full closets in the basement. Yeah, it's, I'm trying to, but I'm trying to purge. I'm trying to get rid of stuff. Come on, Lady Lashonda, talking about yes for the animal. Come on, <laughs> Levon just said we match. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, the Duchess does match. You know she wear hair wraps now. <laughs> it's a, hold on, let me. See. You have inspired me today, Brandon. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yes. Oh, you know, you style it to dictate and stretch you. Yes. Oh. <laughs> yes. Come through, Doctor Williams. Come on. Now you should do this a uniform for your men. Your men would a lot of your kids would love to put it on. We sweat too bad for all this stuff when we minister. Ha! <laughs> Levon just said what? <laughs> I can like that though. Okay. Ah! <laughs> now you are gonna make you too bad. Uh oh, I'm sorry. Don't do that. <laughs> Hilarious. Okay, so we're wrapping up. You guys, I hope you guys have enjoyed this fashion talk with me with Dr. Martin, the choir director himself. This, this such talented man, you guys know who he is. You don't have no fun. She's your queen to be. Yeah. <laughs> now, how Sharon, much does that cost? What are you talking about, Sharon? Huh? How much does that cost? I'm going to see you a bit. <laughs> so, Malcolm, so since we are in this pandemic and everything, um, what is some encouraging words that you can give to the people as we wrap up? You have to find something that gives you a uh, peace of mind, something that will calm you down, something that bring you. One, the thing for me, uh, I love to cook, but I love to be in my yard. And sometimes just being outside, and it's weird, pulling weeds, planting flowers, um, just makes me feel great. And um, so you have to find something that will give you peace of mind and, and able to help you clear your mind so you're able to not be stressed out. It's hard for everybody. Um, and not, not to be deep or change, you know, go too far. But when I look at all of the looting and the things that are going on in Minnesota, a uh, piece of it is that uh, people's anger over um, the, the death of the black man by the hands of the police officer. However, uh, people are just hurting. We've been in houses now for months. Uh, people are unemployed. Unemployment is at a level that we've never seen before. People are wondering, how am I going to feed my kids? You know, so uh, you just have to find something where, you know, just keep your mind. Something different from the TV. You got to do something different than just watch TV, I promise you. 
And and sometimes just opening a window, getting some fresh air, I think that'll help us all. That's good. That's good. And tell the people what they got. The blood's really working. <laughs> <laughs> Glory. Yeah. Now, tell the people where they can find you. Your you music, can, your product. You can find me at Salem Baptist Church. No, I'm just playing. Uh, <laughs> how, wait a minute. Because you gave, I gave a Salem shout out. I got to talk about uh, my LA shout out. Uh, that's the Praise of Zion Missionary Baptist Church where the right Reverend J. Benjamin Hart, which is my pastor in Los Angeles. And actually, uh, next month, they, they just bought my plane ticket, will be my 17th year going back and forth between LA and Chicago. Wow. Um, so I am Malcolm Williams. You can find me uh, on Facebook and uh, Instagram at Malcolm Chicago. That's M A L C O L M Chicago. And my website is MalcolmWilliams.com. All right, you guys. I thank you guys for tuning in with us on Client Talk. Remember, you guys, your appearance means everything. I am Brandon Moment, better known as Brandon. You guys, you guys are also on the platform at StyleMeBrandon.com. Website is www.StyleMeBrandon.com. Next week, you guys, tune in. We got Lady Mildred William. That preacher thing. That singing, she is going to get on here and we're going to talk about some good stuff. We're going to talk about fashion, her experience with me, and we're going to dig in a little deep. So you know you guys want some action on some things. So you guys tune in next week, 5 o'clock. See you guys. Love you and stay strong. Bye-bye. Did you like my music behind under you for your music commercial? God bless you, Malcolm. <laughs>